Hi, and welcome to a PlayClaw 5 video. Today we're going to be covering the H264 AVC codec. First of all, however, we're going to quickly go over how the codec works. If you like, you can skip the first three minutes of this video and get straight to the settings in PlayClaw, but uh, it's re recommended that you take a look at this short tutorial and you'll get a better understanding of how the, the codec works. So the AVC stream consists of three types of frames. iframes, sometimes referred to as keyframes, are independently compressed and almost uh, the same as in MJPEG. P frames are frames that are compressed with reference to the previous I or P frames. The encoder compresses the difference between the two frames, thereby reducing the output file size. B frames are frames that are compressed pressed with reference to previous and next I, P or B frames. The encoder adds a prediction to the difference and reduces the output size. The more I frames in a stream, the larger the stream size will be. The more B frames, the smaller the stream size will be. In some cases, when dealing with dynamic scenes, it is better to use keyframes more often to reduce the final stream size. Streams that consist of whole frames are divided up to group of pictures. GOP is a set of sequential frames between two iframes, including the first iframe. If all references between frames are made inside the GOP, then we call it a closed group, as in the previous B frame slide. But the encoder can reference this frame from another group. This group is called an open group, and in this case the encoder can generate a reduced stream size. Unfortunately, streaming services such as YouTube and Twitch require you to have closed group enabled. During compression, the encoder uses a special parameter called QP, or quantization parameter, to vary the bitrate and image quality. QP is limited to values between 0 and 51 where 0 is the best quality and 51 is the best compression. Now let's take a look at the settings in the new version of PlayClaw. If you don't want to use the advanced settings, you can try using the basic settings. Select the encoding target, either file or streaming, and now select a preset and you're ready to record. Let's open up the advanced settings and see what we have. First you need to select preset. This is a set of predefined encoder parameters. The NVIDIA encoder has several presets and for almost all gamers the NV default preset is just fine. Under bitrate control you can select a bitrate method you want to use. Every encoder has its own special methods but they all have the following control methods. CBR or constant bitrate means that the encoder will vary QP to get a bitrate which is as close as possible to the defined value. It is possible that the output bitrate will be less than what is defined, but it will never be higher. Variable bitrate, the encoder will use QP to encode frames. In the case of AMD, it is possible to define a min QP and max QP parameters to give the encoder a window of quality. CQP, constrainer or constant QP. This is the fastest way to encode frames because we define only one constant QP and the encoder just uses it. This method might not be the best for simple scenes because it is forced to use the same quality for complex and simple images. QP parameters are 0 to 51, where 0 is the best quality and 51 is the smallest output size. In frame sequence control, you can define how the encoder will generate different frame types. The iframes, or keyframes, interval can be defined in seconds or frames. The encoder supports P frames and can support B frames. The video description includes a list of AMD devices that don't support B frames. All other encoders do, however. So 
B frames are inserted between P frames and can greatly decrease output size. To set how many B frames are placed between P frames, use the P frames interval option. If you set it to 1, then no B frames are in the output. If the interval is set to 2, this defines one B frame, and so on. Closed group of pictures option must be enabled for streaming services. Open GOP can help with more efficient compression, however. Constant frame rate will help if PlayClaw seems to be dropping frames. In this case, PlayClaw will add a duplication of the previous frame to achieve a constant frame flow. This could be helpful when using some editors such as Adobe Premiere. The last option in the advanced settings is CABAC. Enabling it will force the encoder to use a more efficient algorithm to generate a smaller output file. Users have frequently asked what parameters are optimal. There isn't a fixed answer as the hardware differs greatly from PC to PC. The best settings are the settings that work best for you. It will take some trial and error to get the best result, but if you keep at it, you should find the best best configuration. Also take into account any settings required by the desired streaming service. As for local recording, use VBR with lowered MinQP and high bitrate. This will produce the best result. Please note increasing the P frames interval can add additional load on the decoder. It's also important to note that the user interface for these settings may change in future releases. If changes are made, updates will be provided in the blog that is linked in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy recording and streaming with PlayClaw.